I want you to hit me as hard as you can. Few voices in the world are as distinct as that of Guns N' Roses frontman Axl Rose. Able to hit the lowest of low notes before belting out the highest of high-pitched screams. And it's freaking beautiful. He is the definition of a rock star. But not every story told of one William Bruce Rose Jr. is a good one. An often violent, diva-esque attitude and a public spat with his bandmates have dominated headlines for the better part of 25 years. His controversial lyrics and his controversial behavior were the bullets and sunshine to his guns and roses. He led one of the hardest rocking bands ever and brought a new life to that genre. Axel had the face of an angel and the voice of a demon. Now he has the face of a larger angel who's had some work done. And he still has the vocal cords of a demon, but this particular demon has been through some stuff. But all of our outward appearances change over the years. So the real question is, did Axel's soul change? Is he still the rock legend we all remember? And was his appetite for destruction a little too destructive? Did Axel Rose rock too hard? And is there such a thing as rocking too hard? It's time we find out just what the f happened to Axl Rose. Before we begin, I just want to say thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. Make sure to click that bell to get those notifications. Now it's time to get back to the show. But to truly understand what the f*** happened to Axl Rose, we must begin at the beginning, and the beginning began when he was born on his birthday, 1962, Lafayette, Indiana. He grew up in a home without rock and roll, you know, because it's the devil's music. Only church choir tunes were allowed in Axel's hellish home. His childhood was full of horrible, unspeakable abuse, which most likely led young Axel down a dark path. Rose would begin getting into trouble, being arrested over 20 times in Lafayette, on charges ranging from public intoxication to battery, and would serve time in the local prison for as much as three months at a time. Authorities got so sick of seeing Axel Rose in court that they threatened to charge him as a habitual criminal, which would mean some serious jail time. So he packed up his bags and moved to LA in December of 1982. Once in LA, Rose would begin forming his musical legacy. It may seem like the bad boys of Guns N' Roses were an overnight sensation, but the truth is that Axl Rose struggled when he first arrived in the City of Angels and Devils. He would form several bands such as Axl, where he got his name from, Rapid Fire, Hollywood Rose, and LA Guns, which all failed to make an impact in the competitive Hollywood music scene. In 1985, Axel and his bandmates would form Guns N' Roses. With the iconic lineup of Axl Rose on vocals, Slash on lead guitar, Izzy Stradlin on rhythm guitar, Duff McKagan on bass, and Steven Adler on drums. Guns N' Roses would make their debut at the famed Troubadour Club before developing a dedicated fan base around the Los Angeles club scene. After signing with Geffen Records, the band would release their highly anticipated debut album, Appetite for Destruction, in July of 1987. Propelled by the hits Welcome to the Jungle, Paradise City, and Sweet Child of Mine, the album would go on to sell over 30 million copies worldwide. 18 million of which were purchased in the USA, making it still, to this day, the best-selling debut album of all time in the United States. The iconic music video for Sweet Child of Mine would recently hit the record books, becoming the first music video of the 80s to hit over 1 billion views on YouTube. Sadly, in August of that year, tragedy struck when performing at the Monsters of Rock Festival in England, when two fans were crushed to death, while the crowd violently danced to the song, It's So Easy. This came after Rose had stopped the show several times to calm the audience down. This tragic event would shape Rose's live performances for years to come, 
as he would continuously stop shows when he saw audience members getting aggressive and have them thrown out by security. By the late 80s, Axl Rose was highly regarded as one of the best frontmen in rock and roll history. He was often described as the finest rock singer currently on the scene. His vocal range was absolutely unbelievable. But now the strings were beginning to fray. The band was dealing with drug and alcohol addictions that were postponing recording sessions for their anticipated follow-up album and Axl Rose would refuse to record any new music until the band fired their longtime manager, even though the rest of the band was against this decision. The band was growing tired of Axl's antics, but that didn't stop them from going on a tour that would be one of the longest tours ever, consisting of 194 shows in 27 countries over the course of two and a half years. However, the tour was basically one controversy after another, with Rose showing up sometimes hours late to the venue, and that is if he even showed up at all. And of course, the riots. One of which happened when Axl Rose spotted a fan taking pictures of the show in the audience. He asked security to apprehend the man, but nothing happened. So Axl Rose took care of business himself and jumped into the audience, took the camera, got back on stage, and said, thanks for the lame ass security, I'm going home, resulting in the now infamous three hour long Riverport riot. Rose would be charged with inciting the riot and found guilty of property damage and assault and was fined $50,000 with two years of probation. Such a bad boy. In 1991, the band would release their albums, Use Your Illusions 1 and 2, which would open in the number one and number two spots on the Billboard 200, something no band has ever done before or since. Sales were strong in part because of the success of the track November Rain. And its epic music video that still remains one of the most expensive music videos ever produced. It is the first music video made prior to the founding of YouTube to surpass 1 billion views. That's right, it got up to a billion without the YouTubes. And it's currently just shy of hitting 2 billion. Guns N' Roses would follow up that video with two more interconnected music videos for the songs Don't Cry and Estranged, forming an unofficial music video trilogy. Guns N' Roses would score another hit with You Could Be Mine, which was featured predominantly in the hit Terminator 2 Judgment Day, as well as achieve the true compliment, having Adam Sandler perfectly parody him on Saturday Night Live. Funny, funny stuff back when Saturday Night Live used to have funny, funny stuff. In 1993, Guns N' Roses would release the cover album, The Spaghetti Incident. The album would feature a hidden track titled Look At Your Game Girl, written by Charles Manson. Slash would say that they recorded the song in a bit of black humor, but never really thought about how offensive it would be to people. The band would go on to remove the track from the album, and they gave some money to some charities and gave some money to the families of the victims of the Manson murders. The album, The Spaghetti Incident, would go on to be the worst selling album of the band's career, with just over one million copies sold to date. The dismantling of Guns N' Roses made headlines everywhere, though it didn't happen all at once. Axl Rose would leave the band in 1995 and form a new Guns N' Roses, as he retained the rights to the band's name, yet by the late 1990s, the band had failed to release any new material or tour in several years, with Axl Rose being called the Howard Hughes of rock and roll, as he was rarely seen in public. He would have a rotating lineup of musicians come to his mansion in Malibu, where he would meticulously work on his next album, an album that, as time went on, would become more myth than anything else. Axl Rose would resurface in 2001 at the Rock in Rio 3 Fest, with several new members in his band, including the legendary guitarist Buckethead. He wears a bucket on his head. Axl Rose would tell the crowd, I have no intention, and never did, of denying you all something you enjoyed. He followed that up by making a surprise appearance 
at the closing act of the 2002 Video Music Awards. And I remember watching that, and I was really excited to see the return of Axel, even though he looked, uh, different. New face, new Axel, but same Axel at the same time. Yet by November, old Axl Rose was up to his old shenanigans when he failed to show up at a concert in Vancouver, resulting in another riot. Us Guns N' Roses fans, we really like to riot, don't we? It's the only way to solve things! Axl Rose would again go back into hiding, working on a top secret project. In 2004, Axl Rose would lend his voice to the video game, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, as a DJ for the radio station, while he and his band would tour extensively after rekindling the friendship with Izzy, who joined him for several dates. And then, 15 years after their last studio album, it finally happened. Chinese Democracy. It was finally released as a Best Buy exclusive, and it landed with a resounding thud. It had been built up so much that when it finally happened, we just didn't know what to do with it. Only managed to sell 261,000 copies in its first week of release, and then just kind of came and went. I know a lot of people are hard on Chinese democracy, but I don't think it's that bad. It's kind of rocking. I don't know if it's worth 15 years of work and waiting, but, you know, it's not bad. In the year 2012, Guns N' Roses would be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. However, Axl Rose did not attend the ceremony because he was still not on good terms with most of his bandmates. However, as time progressed, broken hearts were mended, and Axl, Slash, Duff, and Izzy, and on occasion Steven Adler, would embark on the third highest grossing tour of all time, the Not In This Lifetime Tour. It seemed like the impossible had happened, Guns N' Roses were back together, and I was fortunate enough to get myself a ticket to this legendary comeback tour, and you know what? Yeah, it rocked. I literally had the worst seats in the stadium, and I could still feel the power of Axel's voice. No, it wasn't as pitch perfect as it used to be back in the day, the good old days, but the dude was still rocking, still giving it his all and sweating through like 40 f***ing t-shirts. The reunited Guns N' Roses had been touring steadily since 2016, even releasing two new tracks in 2021. And therein lies the genius of the man, Axl Rose. He simply does whatever the F he wants. And if he doesn't feel like showing up one day, he doesn't. If he wants to have an affair with his bandmate's girlfriend and then use the audio of their intimate relationships in one of the songs so that his bandmate has to hear that sound every time they play the song live, he does! Oh yeah, and that's a true story. Go listen to Rocket Queen. Then you may understand a little bit more why Steven Adler had some issues with Axel. That's right, Axel does whatever the f*** he wants, and you know what? If he wants to voice himself in some cartoons, like the new Looney Tunes or Scooby-Doo, well, he goes ahead and f***ing does that too. Because Axel Rose answers to just one person. Himself. Scoob, Shag, and I became brothers over our love and respect for Pi. Oh, I deep love and deep respect. His vocal skills may have faded a bit over the decades, but his energy and his passion is still there. His life wasn't the easiest, and because of that, he built a wall around himself, a wall that is decorated with gold and platinum albums. And as anyone who has gone to the theaters recently knows, Axl Rose has achieved Marvel Cinematic Universe legendary status by having a character named after him and a soundtrack full of his hits in Thor 4. Thor 4. Thor 4. Sadly, Axl Rose recently has been forced to cancel some concerts due to vocal health issues, but he has assured his loyal fans, fans of over three decades, that he will be back and better than ever, like a rock and roll Terminator. So nobody should give a f about what the f*** happened to Axl Rose, because you know what? He's doing just fine.